As a marketer on a team of one, getting any additional help can make a big difference. In this episode, I'll go over my top five marketing design tools and resources to help you on your next project. Let's get started. Yeah, baby. Hello and welcome to another episode of Under Budget Marketing Design. My name is Richard and in this episode, I'm going to go over my top five marketing tools and resources to help you on your next project. So let's dive in. The first um, resource I'm going to show you is Flat Icon. Uh, I've used it in my other video before. I believe that I might have used it in both uh, episodes, but uh, it's a really great resource to have. Um, the icons are already kind of designed for you. Obviously, they're all designed for you. Um, but you have a really, really big selection to choose from. And especially if you're a non-designer creating um, you know, digital assets and you don't have a graphic designer, this is a really, really, really great solution for you to pump out resources much quicker. And instead of having just like, you know, my webinar is going to be on this date, you can have a little calendar next to your date and then it'll kind of, you know, solidify everything. It's like, oh, that's a date. That's a webinar. I'm not going to join that webinar. Anyways, so um, here you can kind of see the website. I'm just going to kind of scroll over it. Uh, you have some, you know, pre-curated um, packages, if you will. Right? This is for beach. This is for gym, e-commerce, blah, blah, blah. But if you really wanted to get in there, you can type in, I don't know, car, and you'll get a whole bunch of icons that are um, available. You have your, your free and your paid version. When it has a little icon here, it's a little crown that means that it's a paid version, but there are a whole bunch of um, options to choose from. Um, so for example, if I wanted to use this, this guy right here, um, I can download a PNG uh, of different sizes, or I can download SVG, or if I hit this uh, plus icon here, I can get an EPS or a PSD file, or a base64, which I'm assuming is just for your website. Um, but that's really cool. I can even go in here and edit the icon. Oh, wait, no, I can't. That's a, I know I can. You just got to sign in and then you can kind of um, adjust the colors and whatnot. Um, I usually don't do that. Um, I usually download an SVG and then from there I can download, I can uh, adjust the colors as I wish. Um, but if you don't have um, any Adobe product and you're using Canva, the edit, I, uh, the edit option might be a really good um, solution for you if the colors don't necessarily match your brand. Um, so yeah, this is a really, really great, um, great resource to have. Uh, and then if you really wanted to kind of get into the nitty gritty, they have also like packages um, that are designed by the same person. So everything stays consistent um, across the board. And then you can have consistency, consistency and it won't look, you know, like, you know, three different designers designed your icon. Um, unless that's the look you're going for. Um, in which case, uh, hats off to you. Next up we have is Pigment. Pigment is a awesome web-based um, color picker, if you will, uh, by Shape Factory. I highly recommend you guys check this one out. I use this almost daily um, when creating things, um, when cre creating things, when I'm designing, when I'm making assets, right? I use this a lot. Um, so here is the website. It runs really well, super smooth, um, really, really cool. Here, um, I can't speak today, guys. I don't know what's going on with me. Um, we have really cool, you know, default options, default colors that they've um, generated for you. I'm not sure if it's just being generated automatically or if they actually sat there and created these color combinations. But um, so if you just kind of want to choose a specific color, like say you wanted to choose red, you can go to this little search icon here and then type in red. And then it'll give you images and then kind of choose colors within inside those images. Obviously the red. Um, sometimes I find it's a little bit off, but for the most part, this, this search function is really, really, really good. Um, if that's not what you're into, then you can come over here. This is a little color palette thing here. And then you can just choose, I don't know, blue. And then it'll give you a whole bunch of options with blue, reds, and you know, it just kind of shows you different color combinations that work well together. Uh, if you can click on here, it'll kind of break things down. You can change the lightness and darkness. And as you see, as, as I'm changing it, you get the different um, hex values and Pantones and RGB values, which is awesome. And you can kind of mix and match, play around with it. Um, you can even go into, uh, I think they have the customization. No, here you can download the gradient, the dude's tone, 
um, just different options to choose from. Uh, even SGV, or you can even share it with your friends if you want to. It's up to you. Um, here you can kind of change the the pigment, right? Lighter, darker, whatever. Um, and then this kind of the saturation, right? I think so, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is also a really good, good resource to have. It's fun. Um, I find myself going on this website a lot to kind of just play around, fit around with different color options and see, you know, what works well. Um, and I think this is a really cool resource to have in your toolbox. So check it out whenever you get a chance. And next we have socialsizes.io. This is also another awesome website to have. It's super simple and super straight, straight to the point, right? Um, as you know, social media sizes change as, you know, they roll out new updates and things change, different screen sizes, whatever. Um, and you're kind of always kind of, at least for me, I'm always hunting down what the most accurate or the most, um, what the default size is for whatever platform I'm posting onto. So whether it's social media, um, giants like, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, uh, even Instagram, right? This website gives you all those popular, um, social media platforms and gives you all the sizes that are up to date. So if I click on, let's do Facebook. Um, here I have the option to download a sketch file, a Figma file, an XD, a Photoshop file. I don't think this would be your case, um, seeing as you're, using, you're probably using Canva or, I mean, if you are using XD, then um, I'm proud of you. You're doing a great job. Um, even any of these, any of these are awesome, just in general to have. Um, Canva's great but these are industry standards and it's just kind of good to learn a new program. So if you stick around on my channel, I will help you learn new programs. So you can kind of put that in your resume and um, progress as a marketer and not just stick in Canva world. Although Canva is fun and easy to use. It's not the end all be all. Anyways, we're going back down here. So you have your different sizes, you have your newsfeed, your image size. You have your profile picture size, your cover photo size. As I mean, as you can see, it's giving you all the most accurate sizes for all those different um, images that you're going to be posting on Facebook. Uh, and the same goes for all the other um, social media platforms. Um, and what's also a really great feature about this is if you kind of want to set it and forget it, you just type in your email here and then hit notify me and then whenever a change happens on Facebook and the size the size is now you know smaller or bigger this website will then notify you and say hey the change there's a change the the picture's it's different it's not the same so don't waste your time designing something when it's not the correct size so yeah this is an awesome awesome website um, I definitely suggest you add this to your bookmarks um, and check it out whatever you like I find myself checking it out maybe uh, I would say every other week I don't go on there daily but it is something that I I, I check um, weekly I should actually just type in my email here and get notified right that would make more sense um, but yeah check it out bookmark it up next we have crushy crushy I use daily I don't know about you, but I do a lot of webinar decks. Um, we're constantly doing webinars at my current job. So what happens is as we pass the decks along through all the different presenters, things kind of get chunky, right? And you're thinking, oh, it's a PowerPoint presentation. How chunky can it possibly get? Those PowerPoint, they get pretty damn chunky, right? So especially if you have three presenters and they all have their own slides and it just, it gets insane. You, 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 you then receive a file that's like four gigabytes, right? And that's unnecessary. So um, I came across Crushy and Crushy is an awesome, awesome app uh, where you can take a whole bunch of images, bulk images, throw them into Crushy and then crush them. You can, you know, change the parameters if you want to kind of get um, a better optimized image so it's not as big. Um, obviously there's, there's a, a a compromise right the smaller the smaller file size is the the less image quality you get right but with crushy you can kind of finagle with that and you know get somewhere maybe in the middle right um, I use crushy every day especially when it comes to webinar decks I can just crush the whole damn thing I can just download all the images with inside that that presentation 
crush them down, and then just reinsert them. It's a little bit tedious, but you'll have a file size that's much more manageable, um, and it's easier to pass around with all the other presenters, and it's just an all-around better experience instead of you having to wait like five, 10 minutes for the freaking thing to, to open up on your computer. Um, so let me give you an example. I have Crushy pulled up here, and I'm gonna take this image, and I'm just gonna drag them in there, and it gives me the size of the actual image and how big the image is. And this image is pretty small, but for this example, I'm just gonna kind of show you how it works. Um, I'm gonna come over here. I would just, I usually just leave this um, as is, uh, but here you can kind of finagle with the quality as you see, as I, as I move it around, I have some other parameters that are changing, but let's just say I want my quality level to be a little bit less than two. Let's just say, uh, I'll do two, right? Um, this is just the JPEG quality. This, I don't really know exactly what it does. It has a description of what it is right here at the bottom, but let's just say I want to, I'm, I'm happy with these parameters, right? I'm gonna hit crush all. Crushy is gonna do its thing and crush it down, right? Oh, look at that, it's been crushed. It says it's 36% smaller. Let's compare changes, which is awesome feature of Crushy. And I'm kind of sliding around and there's not a big, big, big difference. I don't know if you can see it, but on my screen, you can see uh, a little bit of the quality being lost in the the hairs in the ear, but it's such a, a minute um, change that no one's gonna tell the difference. They're not gonna be like, oh, that's, that's a crushed image. Um, and then once you have that done, you can just right click it and then hit save as cat. That's not cat, that's car, cat. And then boom, you have your crushed image, which been crushed down. So um, check out Crushy, awesome, awesome, awesome app. It's free, guys, it's free. Just go to crushy.app and download it for Windows 10 or Mac OS. I highly recommend this one. I use it daily, guys, and I think you should have it. It's, 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 even if you're doing print stuff, guys, you can, you can easily reduce the size of something for print on here as opposed to, I don't know, I guess downloading it from, no, I would say, for me, in InDesign, if you're if you're designing something in print and you have an image from, let's say, iStock, right? And the iStock image is like four gigabytes and it's freaking 17K. Um, you don't need that much for print, right? So you would then go into Photoshop and then reduce it by however many percentage InDesign would tell you. Um, and that gets tedious, but Crushy kind of does that work for you. So you would just take that image, crush it down, put it back into InDesign, it just, it's a time saver, really. Daily usage out of this bad boy. Check it out when you can. And last but not least, we have Unsplash. And I know for a fact you know what Unsplash is. You probably use Unsplash daily as I use Unsplash daily. Um, it's an awesome, awesome website for free stock photography. And God knows that you've tried to download, or you probably even downloaded, downloaded some stuff in the past through maybe Getty Images if you're, you know, spilling money off the wazoo. I don't even know what that means. Um, or if you even used iStock or Shutterstock. Um, those images, although really great, can get really expensive very fast. Um, so an alternative that's free is Unsplash. Um, these are free to use. Um, I'm pretty sure there's limitations, right? You probably can't just go and start printing out, you know, international ads for a magazine or whatever. Um, there are probably limitations to that. I would check out their their information on that. So probably somewhere on the website. Um, but I mean, we use it a lot for just blogs and for, you know, maybe social media images, but nothing too too crazy, right? So Unsplash is awesome. So I'm gonna kind of go over Unsplash real quick. Um, so here we go. So Unsplash has, you know, the most trendy keywords, if you will, right? Currently, c -c -c currently, I'm, I'm stuttering guys, I don't know what's going on with me. Huh. Currently we have COVID-19. <laughs> COVID-19 as the, the most trendy keyword. And of course it's just people wearing masks and, you know, being happy. And the images are super high res. They're 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 fairly 
well done. I, I believe it's a community of photographers who upload their images here and then Unsplash then uses them. And then I guess the hopes for the photographer is that you give them credit so then they get some sort of reputation or exposure to their portfolio and then gives them, I don't know, I guess more freelance. But um, if you're in a niche um, market, you might not find exactly what you're looking for in, on Unsplash, but you can always find some like abstract you know, element that could be used for your company. Um, like if you sold, I don't know, turtle GoPro cameras, I don't think you'll find a turtle GoPro camera on Unsplash, but um, you'll find some generic stuff, right? So if you have, I don't know, computer, you'll see a whole bunch of, you know, images that can be used for any sort of business, right? Oh, here is a generic picture of people working, uh, pointing at, I guess, mock-ups of some sort. Um, this image needs to be seriously color corrected. This is just insane. But you just come over here, you hit, you can hit, um, you know, small, medium, or large, or the original file size, um, which is pretty, pretty big, right? That's decent for print. Um, it might be a little bit too heavy, so you might have to use Crushy on that bad boy. You see what I did right there? I looped it back around, guys. I looped it back around. Um, but yeah, I, I use this a lot. I'm pretty sure you already know about it, but I mean, there's also a whole bunch of other, um, I guess you could say, competitors. Um, I find that Unsplash is more geared toward businesses as the other ones are more um, millennial slash Instagram-y. Uh, and if that's the feel you're going for, then, you know, by all means, go ahead and download whatever you have to download, right? Anything that makes your business look better, uh, I'm all for. So check out Unsplash. Um, as always, like and subscribe. That's the end of the video. I hope these tools give you some sort of, I don't know, I hope they ease your life a little bit or you can just kind of have them in your little toolbox whenever you want to, you know, pull one out, go for it. Do what you got to do. Um, and in the comments below, if you have a tool that you think I would like, please just throw it in there. No one talks to me, guys. I'm here all alone. <laughs> ah, good times. Um, well, thank you so much for watching this video, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode of Under Budget Marketing Design. Yeah, baby.